This is our first course on digital forensics. We will cover the introduction to data forensics topic in this lecture and then we will continue by building a computer system for forensic examinations. What we will cover in this course is what is data forensics, the definition of it, who use data forensics, uh, who can benefit from that. Uh, we would like to draw a line in between digital evidence and regular evidence. Then we would like to show you or give you some ideas about where you can find digital evidence, then how you could acquire that digital evidence and what is the best way to store that digital evidence. And then after all, we would like to show you the basics of interpreting digital evidence to build a report or to reason about that collected evidence. And finally, we would like to build the link in between legislation and the ways of digital evidence. Okay, it's better to start with, the, with what is data forensics. Uh, forensics, just by itself, uh, is the science of finding traces of previous actions by analyzing the real world. Most of the time, uh, these forensic trace, forensics traces could be fingerprints or some chemical compounds left on the crime scene and so on. Uh, what we say, what we mean by data forensics is this. Uh, in our daily lives, most of the time we continuously use computer systems. We store data on these computer systems and also we do, we make lots of actions uh, on computer systems. This actions may be done in our local computer or it may be done throughout a network, something like an internet. And we would like to find the remnants, the traces of these remaining uh, remains of these actions we have done on computers or the stored, stored data we have previously stored on one computer. So actually this is against, uh, again the same thing. Uh, we are analyzing the computer systems and after that we are trying to find some traces of previous actions and reason about them to build meaningful reasonings uh, and reports for authorities or for whoever would like to benefit from these forensics. And now, yes, maybe it is better to talk about who can benefit from forensics. Uh, I can think of the most basic scenario. For example, you may accidentally delete one of your files and you would like to recover that file. And at that point, uh, you need to do data forensics. You are looking for remaining parts of the, the, the deleted data, or you are going through and analyzing your hard disk storage, for example, or you are going for looking, going and looking for the uh, file allocation tables, which is some sort of uh, pointers to your actual data in your hard drive, in your physical hard drive. Uh, it is mostly used by operating systems, which is transparent to you most of the time. But in case you want to recover something, you may go and check all these locations to find any traces of the accidentally deleted file and find it. Uh, the second scenario uh, you may think of is the law enforcement. Uh, whenever they are looking for traces of some actions done uh, and for criminal uh, investigations, uh, they may go and find, capture some computerized systems like cell phones, uh, laptops, or emails of someone, or some kind of communication in between parties, and they want to reason if someone 
uh, suspected to commit a crime or not. And to do that, most of the time, law enforcement parties are looking for data forensic analysis to reason about what has happened in the computer systems of the criminals. And maybe it is better to make a difference between the digital evidence and the general name of evidence. Because in general, when you say just, when you just think about evidence, uh, actually, you mention something that may lead you to understand if something has happened or not. Uh, it's something like the fingerprint, the very basic example. If you see a fingerprint of someone uh, in, a, in a glass, uh, then you may reason that this person previously held that glass. And here, digital evidence is the placeholder for this. But what we do in the digital world is stored in hard disks or in some log files. And we cannot directly see it. For example, you can see if there is a fingerprint on a piece of glass, it is possible that you can see it directly. But digital evidence is not like that. You need tools and you need some kind of experience on how computers work to understand and to find the traces of previous actions and storages. So actually, uh, to sum it up, we can say digital evidence is the evidence that we cannot directly observe, but we can only uh, find and read them through some computer analysis. Where you can find the digital evidence? The most obvious place to find the digital evidence is the already stored data. So you can just go on a hard disk of some computer and check what resides there. If you see a bunch of files, it is clear that those files are stored in that computer. And you know, the in the hard disk, sometimes you copy something and then delete it. But this may, again, leave traces on the hard disk. So actually, even if you think that some piece of your hard disk, uh, like say 40% of your hard disk is free, actually it may be, again, full of pieces of data that was previously stored and then deleted. They are not any kind of organized. They, they don't have any kind of organization. So it may be difficult to go into that pile of bits and search to read them, but you may still find traces in those areas. So the whole hard disk, even if it has empty space or not, uh, is a place that you can find evidence. Another piece of data you can look for is uh, the regular log files. The log files of computer systems are storing lots of information. And these things, mostly the logs, are mostly triggered by actions that is done on computer systems. So these actions are stored uh, in a file or in an external system in another computer sometimes or in another database uh, with, with a timestamp on it. So you can actually go for a specific date chrono chronologically and search what has happened at that point of time. One thing to consider about log files is that they may not, they might not be intact when you check it. Uh, for example, uh, as the log files are mostly just files, someone could also go and delete the log files. So some of the time, uh, sometimes you actually need to ensure yourself that the log files are actually has kept their integrity. Uh, another point, another place where you can find digital evidence is uh, computer networks. Uh, if two computer systems 
are communicating with each other, they send and receive digital messages. And these digital messages could be captured on the fly uh, when they are on the wire, or you may have some kind of logs again based on this communication. So if you have, if Alice and Bob are communicating uh, through an internet service provider, and if internet service provider keeps logs of who communicate with whom at that time, uh, this metadata also could be a digital evidence. Uh, the, the, this data doesn't require, the, it doesn't necessitate to include the actual communication between Alice and Bob, but you may only have some log that Alice has called Bob and they speak for five minutes. You, you can have, you can have such information and you can uh, reason about that Alice knows Bob and they are friends and so on based on this information. So actually, we can say in the most basic, uh, if we summarize, we can say in the most basic form that you can have storage devices on computer systems and their logs. And also you can have computer communications and their logs as the basic, most fundamental places that you can find the digital evidence. Uh, now, after you find the digital evidence, you need to acquire it. For example, as I said, uh, you may have some remainings of some previously stored file on the empty space of a hard disk. Then you need to find a way to read this pile of bits and interpret them to have some meaningful uh, understanding. So you can understand if it was actually a file, if that bit string was actually a file, or if it is a piece of the file, or they are just random bits that you find on this empty space of the data, uh, just by coincidence. You need to understand that. And for that, you need tools to acquire this information. These tools could be hardwares or softwares. Uh, and there may be different aims of using these tools. Uh, for example, just copying some file or some empty space from one disk to another disk, or to wiping out the disk uh, at all, to start uh, to make a fresh start for your disk, uh, for your examination. Or you can think of several other devices uh, that you can use in computer networks. Like, for example, you can have a proxy server that you can find data about previous com communications and so on. Or you can find DNS requests uh, to indicate if some computer is trying to make a connection to one other computer named X. So these are uh, the evidences that you can acquire and you need tools to acquire them and you also need to have tools to interpret, find statistics uh, in them uh, and report them. So actually you need a whole bunch of tools starting from very low level tools and hardwares to very high level uh, reporting visualizing tools. Then after you acquire the digital evidence, uh, you need to find a way to store the digital evidence. Think of the regular case. If you find a gun in a crime scene, uh, what you should do is to keep the gun uh, in a piece of bag uh, without touching it to keep the fingerprints on uh, and then store it in a safe so no one else could go and touch the gun after the crime has been committed. And this is the same thing. After you collect the evidence, you need to keep it safe. And we may have some cryptographic methods and also organizational operational methods to keep this digital evidence safe. So there are ways to store these evidence. Uh, 
uh, also maybe we should go back and mention that there are tools to not to disturb the state of the digital evidence because whenever you are trying to collect evidence if you modify it actually it is not an evidence anymore because it is modified and we don't know how the modification affects the final result finally we can think about interpreting digital evidence uh, to do that uh, imagine you are searching for the empty space of a hard disk to do that you can actually search for previously known uh, bit streams bit strings uh, to see if some piece of some file was previously there or not when you find such information uh, you should be careful that Sometimes uh, you see some random patterns and you may think that random pattern is actually a piece of some data. So in digital forensics, most of the time you encounter with false positives. So you need to cancel out these false positives and actually you need to draw a line between false positives and actual evidence. To understand that, you need lots of reporting tools search tools, statistics, and sometimes even you may use uh, machine learning techniques to ease your decisions and uh, make a more performant uh, investigation uh, to do things fastly. Finally, I would like to mention the link in between the digital evidence and legislation. Uh, Again, uh, I would like you to think about the regular evidence. Uh, when you have a, some real evidence, some footprints on the, on the carpet, for example, uh, you photograph them, you may try to keep the carpet, and then you need to make some kind of interpretation of this footprint. And most of the time it is not actually proving something but it gives you an idea about reasoning you may say okay if there is a footprint on the carpet most probably someone would step on it but it should be the case that a child were just putting a bot uh, on a mat first and then putting it on the carpet uh, just for playing uh, so, it, is, it should be clear that when we are dealing with digital evidence, actually it doesn't state anything by itself, but still it requires some kind of interpretation and reporting, and then finally you may think of a possible uh, sequence of actions that had happened before, and you may reason about that. And at that point, uh, you actually build your uh, connection with the legislation and uh, the legislation is there to decide if this evidence is valuable, if it is correct and useful and so on to decide on what has happened in that area before. This is the end of our introduction to data forensics part, course and we will continue about how to build a computer system for digital forensics in the next one. Goodbye.